this is the second video for section 7.4 and it's going to talk about how you find the inverse of a logarithmic function. Um, so I just want you to, before we actually go through the motions of taking the inverse of a function, I want you to think about how you inverse any function, which you should be familiar with from a couple chapters ago. So how do you find the inverse of a function? You should know that first you switch x and y. And then you, I just dropped my calculator. Um, you switch x and y, and then you rewrite it in exponential form. Now, you're not familiar with that, but you do know that you switch x and y of any function. So for example, I'll just make something up here. If I had y equals 2x minus 1, you know that you switch, um, you switch x and y first, and then you would resolve for x. And I think you're okay with that process, but just in case, that's a quick refresher. So with logarithmic functions, you're going to have some, you know, y equals log base something of something. So we'll use base b and x, of course. Then you switch x and y. So literally, switch x and y. Then you want to resolve for y. Now here's where the unfamiliar piece comes in. Well, you can't, you can't divide by log base b because it's the, you know log base b of y is a number. So it's like x equals 5, right? So you can't divide log base b because that's like, well, that's just absurd, right? I mean, if you had x equals 5, you can't, like, divide by part of 5 or something like that. That's just craziness. So same with logarithms. You absolutely can't divide by just the log of the base. Um, so all you can do is when you're stuck in one position, one form, go to the other form. So if you put this, or excuse me, logarithmic function into exponential form, the base is b, the base is b, um, the y is with the log, so it equals y in exponential form, it equals x in logarithmic form, so it's your exponent in exponential form, and ta-da, it's solved for y. And that is how you find the inverse of a log function. So, knowing that, um, I'm going to extend off of what you know. So you also know that if two functions are inverses of one another, their compositions, remind yourself of this notation, f of g of x and g of f of x, compositions should both both equal x. So really quickly, um, I'm going to call my logarithmic function f of x, and I'm going to call the inverse that I got g of x, just so you can follow along. If I do f of g of x, I'm going to take log base b of f of x, I'm going to replace that x with f of, or excuse me, g of x, and that's b to the x. Well, I know that that should equal x. So basically what's that, what that is saying is if you take the log base b of some exponential function with base b, they essentially cancel each other out while they actually, it's 1. So log base 2 of 2 is really just 1. Hence, whatever that exponent is, is what you're going to be left with. Okay, now do the other composition. I'm going to do g of f of x. So start with g, which is my exponential function, and that's just b to the x, but instead of x, I'm going to replace it with the f of x, which is the log function. And by definition, I know that equals x. So what does that tell you? If you have an exponential function of base b raised to... So if the log base b is being raised to an exponential function of base b, again, they essentially cancel each other out to whatever is left in this case, x. Here's a couple examples of using inverse properties. So now that you understand how the inverse comes about, um, simplifying these expressions actually should be very simple as long as you can identify that they are um, canceling each other out in a sense. So the first one... It's fairly straightforward that you have an exponential function that's being raised to a logarithmic expression, or the expression is being raised to a logarithmic function. So your base of 10, um, I'm going to just remind you that when you just see the word log and there's no base, you know that that's the common log, which is a base of 10. So if you rewrite that, um, not that you have to rewrite that, but if you see that then you have a base of an exponential function of 10, and a base of a logarithmic function of 10, they cancel each other out, and that expression is really just 6.7, because that's all that's left if they cancel each other out. 
Um, the next one is log base 2 of 16 to the x. And again, if the base of your log and the base of your exponent are the same, they cancel each other out. Well, they're not the same. So this one takes a little bit of manipulation. Um, I can't change the log of my base. If that's a log base 2, it's got to stay as is. But I can change or write 16 as a power of 2, and then it will have the same base. So for example, my log base 2, well, 16 is 2 to the 4th. And there's also an x there. Don't forget about the x that was there. That still carries over. So again, 2 to the 4th is really just 16. So I did not change the problem. I just rewrote it because now with a log base 2 of an exponential function, base 2, they cancel each other out, and I'm left with 4x. So again, the key to these is if you have a base of an exponent and the base of a log that are the same, they cancel out and vice versa, the base of a log and the base of an exponent, the same, they cancel out to whatever's left. Then we'll do a couple um, inverse functions, and I actually have three because they can really be fairly picky in their differences. Um, so the first one is uh, y equals log base 3 halves of x, and to find the inverse, of course, first you switch x and y. And then you solve for y. Now remember, when you have log base 3 halves, you actually can't solve or divide by just the log of the base because log base 3 halves of y is a number. So I put it into exponential form. So the base of my log is 3 halves. That means the base of my exponent is 3 halves. It equals x, and that becomes my power in exponential form. And I'm taking the log of y, and that equals y then in exponential form and it's solve for y. So that is the inverse of that logarithmic function. Um, part b, first I would switch. I have y equals the natural log of quantity x minus 4. So again, first you switch x and y, and then you solve for y. And again, I can't divide by the natural log, or I can't add 4 because the y minus 4 is in parentheses, which means it's all a part of that natural log. So all I can do, because I'm stuck, is go to exponential form. So remind yourself, the base of natural log is e. There's a little e there, okay? So that's going to be the base of my exponential function. And it equals x, so that's going to become my power. And what my exponential function equals is what I'm taking the natural log of, which in this case is y minus 4. And then last but not least, I can add that 4 over so that it's solved for y. And that exponential function is the inverse of lo the natural log function. And last but not least, part C, I have y equals log base 4 of x minus 1. So again, I switch x and y. And notice the minus 1 is not a part of the log. So I have log base 4 of y and then minus 1. That's not a part of my log. So actually, before I do put it into exponential form, I have to isolate the log. So I need to add that 1 over to the other side. And that's really a critical piece of this problem, is noting um, the difference between part b, where the minus 4 was a part of the natural log. Here, the minus 1 is not a part of the log. So when can you add that 1 over, and when can you not add the, the, you know, the 4 over? So make sure you really um, look at that carefully. And then, of course, I'm stuck in logarithmic form, so I put it in exponential form. So the base of my log is 4. It equals x plus 1, so that becomes my exponent. And I'm taking the log of y, so that becomes what it equals. And then it's solved for y.